Well, 50 years ago today, Apollo 11 astronauts were making their final preparations to descend to the surface of the moon. Celebrations and remembrances are happening across the country, and we're looking back at Indiana's contribution to the lunar landing. Purdue University is celebrating the moon landing with a public exhibit, revolving around the personal papers of alum and first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. He and his wife, Carol, donated a large number of memos and artifacts to the university's flight and space exploration archives. The exhibit is comprised of parts of Armstrong's life before, during, and after the historic Apollo 11 mission. Some of the selected pieces include one of Armstrong's Apollo 11 training suits and his report card from Purdue. Much further south in Mitchell, locals are celebrating the Apollo mission by focusing on fellow Purdue grad and second man in space, Gus Grissom. He's credited with laying the groundwork for the moon landing with his work on Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. First man to fly in space twice. First man to fly a two-man spacecraft. First man to actually change his orbit, to actually show people that you can actually fly and navigate in space. Necessary to get to the moon. That's what Gemini was about. Proving that we can navigate and do the things necessary to get us to the moon. But before he went to space, Grissom started out in this small Mitchell home, now a museum that celebrates his life and achievements. After spending World War II as a clerk, Grissom moved back home to Lawrence County, married his wife Betty, and settled down. But he never got comfortable. So they moved to West Lafayette, where Gus got his engineering degree from Purdue before joining the Air Force. Not long after, his life went in another direction. So in 1959, Gus was selected to be part of the original seven Mercury astronauts. Mercury was the first in NASA's three stages to get to the moon. Each mission was designed to get astronauts closer to the moon landing. After Grissom finished his Mercury missions, it was on to the next step toward the moonshot, the Gemini program. He designed that cockpit so much so that the astronauts called it the Gusmobile. But the Apollo project was different. From the beginning, Grissom expressed reservations about the build quality. He was vocal with his criticisms of the program, going so far as to bring a lemon to let engineers know what he thought of the spacecraft. He hung it on the, with a coat, with a coat hanger, right. and he hung it on the actual spacecraft to tell them his dissatisfaction with this. Uh, it is a lemon. And his fears were confirmed when, in 1967, two years and a few months before his fellow astronauts walked on the moon, his capsule caught fire, and he and two other astronauts died during a test. Well, they were pushing the technology. They were still using a pure oxygen environment, and simply they had a short inside the capsule, and with pure oxygen as a fuel, it just literally took seconds for it to, to cause the damage that it did. But Steve Grissom says that fire changed everything with the Apollo program. They redesigned that whole capsule. The whole spacecraft got redesigned from the inside out. It was a wake-up call for NASA engineers. Neil Armstrong even wrote a letter saying as much. I have a, a letter from Neil that even states, uh, had that fire not happened, he said we wouldn't have made it on time, and we all know that. He says were it not for that fire, there's a good chance Gus would have been on the first trip to the moon. Deke Slayton mentioned in his book Deke, and Deke was the picker of the astronaut crews and flights and all that. He even made the comment in the book that Gus would have been the first man on the moon had that fire not happened. Even with his life cut short, Gus's legacy lives on, especially in Lawrence County. This weekend is Grissom Day, and we tie it to his first launch. And it's uh, July the 21st and that's his first launch in the Mercury program. Locals will gather to celebrate the Hoosier who helped guide the moonshot from Mercury to Apollo, where 10 missions after he died, two men stepped off the shoulders of giants and on to the face of the moon. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Tyler Lick.